Hi everybody. In this video I'm going to give you a, a bit of a background in terms of maximum likelihood and how we use that to estimate our parameters of, a, of an occupancy model uh, and also give you a few tips to try and make sure that the estimates you're getting uh, from an analysis are sort of reasonable and the, the right ones that we're after. So firstly when we're trying to estimate our parameters using occupancy models there's two general ways we could do it. We could use sort of Bayesian methods um, which we're not going to talk about at the moment uh, but the other way and it's quite a common way is maximum likelihood. So most of the packages that are in R and also software like Presence and Mark um, all of those techniques use this thing called maximum likelihood to come up with the estimates for our parameters. And the way that works is that we have something called a likelihood function and a likelihood function all that is it's just proportional to the probability of observing your data given the model that you're trying to fit to the data. So the likelihood function has as many parameters or sort of unknown variables as parameters that you have in your model. So the more covariates you add to the model the more parameters you're trying to estimate the more complicated these likelihood functions are. But if we take uh, a fairly simple example for a start, suppose we've got just so one parameter we're trying to estimate using maximum likelihood, then that defines a, a function. And if I just do a, a, a sketch of this for a second, so we might have our, our parameter of interest on the, the x-axis, so I'll just call it, I'll just call it theta. And then on the, the y-axis we have our, our likelihood. And so it's a function, it's just a number, um, it's just some equation that we put our values in for theta in this case, and what it does is this likelihood function will be a, a smooth continuous function, and if we just have the one parameter, you know, it may look something like, you know, like that, and so what this represents is the value of our likelihood at all these different values for this parameter theta. Now when we just have one parameter, it's, it's quite simple, it's just some sort of smooth sort of line. Um, but when we have more, com uh, so more complex situations with more parameters, then it becomes a surface. So if we have two parameters, it's, it's kind of like a surface, like a, you know, like a map, like a you know, terrain out there in the landscape. Um, but then we have three, four, five, six parameters, we start getting these really complicated sort of multi-dimensional surfaces that are really hard to visualize. But with just one parameter, the, what we're trying to do when we analyze data is that the, the software that we use, it has this you know, calculation for the likelihood built in as part of the, the software. Um, but then what it does, it, it starts with an initial value for theta. Because it doesn't know what this function actually looks like, it just knows how to calculate it for different single values of your parameter. So if we start off and say, you know, the software starts with this value for theta, then the software will calculate the value of the likelihood function at that point. And then what it does is it takes that first value and changes it a little bit. So it might sort of add or subtract a little bit. And then it re-evaluates the likelihood function. So suppose it comes down here and it tries that value. Okay, we're trying to find the top of the hill. We're trying to find the, the value for our parameter that maximizes this likelihood function. So if it tries this value down here, it's, it's going the wrong way. It's going downhill. So then it might say, okay, that's not as good a value for theta. So it might go the different direction. It might try a value here. And that will give us a, a value that has a higher likelihood. And so then the software will you know, shift to that point for theta. And now we'll do that same thing again. We'll try another value for theta. And we'll keep trying different values until it works its way up to sort of the peak here. Or very close to that peak. And once it's found that peak for that particular value of, of theta, so this point here on the number line, okay, that point there, that represents our, our value for our, our parameter of interest that has maximized the likelihood function. So this value here is what we call our maximum likelihood estimate. It's the value for that parameter that maximizes that likelihood function. And if you've got a nice problem, uh, you just might have one peak, okay, whether it's sort of you know, 
two, three, four, or five different parameters, there might be just sort of one maximum uh, by this likelihood function. And in that case, now things seem to work pretty well. Um, but in reality, oftentimes you might have multiple maxima. Okay, so suppose our likelihood function is multi multimodal. Okay, so it looks something more like this. And maybe it's got one peak and it's got another peak somewhere else. Now what can happen is, you know, if these techniques, these the software that's being used is trying to find the top of the hill and doesn't like downward steps, if when we start our optimization, which is the process of trying to find the maximum, if we start the value down here, then what our software might do is sort of works its way up to this peak here and then stops. Okay, so if it stops there, then it would report you know, this value down here. Let's get rid of that one. It might report you know, that as our maximum likelihood estimate, which is incorrect. It's, it's a maximum, but it's not the maximum for our likelihood function because we're trying to find this point here. So if the software starts with a value down here, it might find this peak, whereas if we start with a value, you know, perhaps here, then the algorithm may go you know, up to this peak here, which is the one we're actually after. So this is a situation where we have multiple maxima, and what's important here is that the starting value that we used might end up at a different peak. Okay, so this is really important. I mean, this is a common thing with any maximum likelihood based method for analyzing data. So it's not just the case for occupancy models. It's the same with mark recapture models. It's the same with generalized linear models. Um, lots of different techniques use maximum likelihood. And one thing to be aware of is that there's always this possibility that there are multiple maxima. And that's actually fairly common, particularly with more complex models. And so one thing we can do if we want to sort of check our results, and this is one of those things that's pretty good practice, is we can try different starting values or different initial values for our optimization. So if we try you know, three or four different values in this situation, then sometimes you might find this lowest peak, but then hopefully we will also find this highest peak. And obviously the, the set of results you want to retain to use for our inference would be the ones that give us that higher likelihood function a higher likelihood value. Um, so that's one suggestion, is that when we're analyzing data using um, maximum likelihood techniques, we should always try different starting values or different initial values to try and make sure we, we find the top of the peak, sorry, the peak, the top of the likelihood function. Uh, the other little practical tip is that when we're analyzing the, these, the data, you know, we're often using, say, some sort of formula-based notation to define what set of covariates we were including, um, or if we're using program mark or presence, we might be using a design matrix to define what covariates are in our model. Um, a real easy practical trick, uh, trick is instead of trying different starting values, is you can also just change the order of your covariates in your formula or, or the columns in your design matrix. Just changing the order of those uh, covariates just changes the, the pathway that the software will take when it's trying to find the maximum. So there you have it. Um, so when we're doing maximum likelihood based methods, including with occupancy models, we really should be trying different starting values to try and ensure that we find uh, the top of the hill, trying to find that, that peak of our maximum uh, function, sorry, our likelihood function. Uh, or the other little trick we can do is just change the order of our covariates again to try and make sure we've found that, that maximum. So there you have it. Uh, until next time, see you later. Bye.